The morning sun shines on the gleaming hide of a muscular ranch horse. The aroma of bacon and coffee drifts from the wood cook stove at a cow camp. Silver spurs jingle as the men and women of the West get set for another day in the saddle. From the heart of Canada's finest ranching country, this is the Spirit of the West with rancher and horse trainer Hugh McLennan and his collection of music, poetry, and conversations with the folks who live and work with horses and cattle in the Spirit of the West. You know, a lot of our friends head south at this time of year, some of them all the way to Hawaii, and a lot of them go to Arizona. And I guess that's okay, hauling horses down to the desert, riding in the sunshine while we bundle up each morning and do the chores in the dark, but I really wouldn't want to miss Christmas time here on the Northern Range, with snow all over the ground, great times visiting with our neighbors that we don't see near often enough. And this week, I've rounded up some of the stories and songs that really capture the flavor of Christmas in cattle country. And wherever you are, I hope you enjoy our look at Christmas in the West. The wind is blowing cold down the mountain tips of snow And across the ranges lying brown and dead It's crying through the valley trees that wear the mistletoe And morning with the gray clouds overhead Yet it's sweet with the beat of my little horse's feet And I whistle like the air was warm and blue and I'm riding up the Christmas trail to you, old folks I'm riding up the Christmas trail to you Oh, maybe it was good when the whinny of the spring Had wheeled me to hopping of the bar and living in the shadow of a sailing buzzard's wing And sleeping underneath a roof of stars But the bright campfire light only dances for a night While the home fire burns forever clear and true So round the year I circle back to you, old folks And I'm riding up the Christmas trail to you Maybe it was good at the roundup in the fall When the cloud of ball and dust before us ran And the pride of rope and saddle was a driving of us all To a stretch of nerve and muscle man to man But the pride sort of died when the man got weary eyed T'was a sleepy boy that rode the night guard through and he dreamed himself along the trail to you, old folks Dreamed himself along the Christmas trail to you The coyote's winter howl cuts the dust behind the hill But the ranch's shining window I can see And though I don't deserve it, and I reckon never will There'll be room beside the fire kept for me Skip my plate Cause I'm late, let me hit that old kid gate For tonight I'm stumbling tired of the new And I'm riding up the Christmas trail to you, old folks I'm riding up the Christmas trail to you I'm riding up the Christmas trail to you, old folks I'm riding up the Christmas trail to you Ah, Don Edwards and Michael Martin Murphy riding up the Christmas trail. And you know when you live a long ways from the city and you depend on Mother Nature and the cattle markets, you sometimes reflect on the past year around Christmas time. And that's what J.W. Beeson was doing when he wrote this. It's 15 below on the prairie. The wind chill's down near 42. And I'm watching the Texas Blue Norther blow in, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do because... The tanks are froze pretty near solid, and the handles broke off my best axe, and the feed's getting wet from a hole in the roof where it's leaking all over the sacks. And I'm feeding more hay than I planned on, because the snow covered up all the grass. Tractor broke down, and the pickup won't start, and it's cold as a well digger's shovel. It's the 24th day of December, 
and the sagebrush is covered with ice, and I think that a hot cup of coffee or a good shot of rye would be nice, because my feet are so cold I can't feel them, and my fingers are pretty near froze, and there's icicles hung off my mustache from the drip dripping off of my nose. And I was hoping I'd get to quit early and be back at the house Christmas Eve, but these baldies are crying and hungry, and there ain't no one to feed if I leave. And Oh, there's one little motley-faced heifer that somehow got in with a bull, and she's just too little to leave by herself, because the calf's going to have to be pulled. And, well, there's one other thing I could mention, a fact that is painfully clear. I'm so broke that I can't pay attention. So, I guess I'll spend Christmas out here. But it's pretty out here on the prairie, where the stars light the cold winter sky, and though I can't remember when things was much worse, I guess I'm still a right lucky guy, because I've got a good woman who loved me no matter what time I come home, and my young'uns are happy and healthy, though I wish they weren't quite so near grown. And I've got that new three-year-old filly that's better than I even dreamed. And my old spotted gildan, he's as good as they get. So things ain't quite as bad as they seem. I've got no cause for being ungrateful. To gripe and complain isn't good, because there's people all over this country that'd trade places with me if they could. So I reckon I'll have a good Christmas, in spite of my problems somehow. I'll just watch as this Texas blue norther blows in and sing Oh Holy Night to the cows. Jeremy Willis was raised on a ranch not too far from right here, and uh, he wrote a song about Christmas on the home place, and it's become a seasonal hit because the cows don't know what day it is. Somebody's got to do the chore But was the gear for all our creatures Great and small There's hay to feed Troughs to thaw When the chores are all finished They will deck the halls Yeah, those cows don't know It's Christmas time at all Yeah, those cows don't know it's Christmas time 
Coming up, some of those rare songs and stories as Christmas with the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to Christmas in the West from the Spirit of the West. I've been digging around in the vault for stories and poems and songs about the kind of Christmas that adorns those leaning tree cards and calendar pictures, and I think you'll enjoy some of the stuff I've found. Coming up is the story of Buddy the Christmas Steer, and here's a guy we've sure enjoyed over the years, wonderful musician, Ed Peekycoot, and Memories of a Prairie Christmas. Where the air is crisp and clean Jack Frost dancing across the window It's a cozy winter scene Tin star hanging on our little tree I smell grandma's mincemeat pie Later on I'll go out skating Beneath the starry velvet skies Children laughing everywhere Making angels in the snow Feeling magic in the air With the prairie Christmas glow in the red suit broke a bunch of flying reindeer to drive and pull a sleigh, according to D.W. Grothy, there was Buddy the Christmas Steer. I'll tell you a tale of the old frontier story of sorts filled with lots of good cheer. Back before Santa and all his reindeer was the legend of Buddy the Christmas Steer. Some say he was born in the snow and the cold, yellow and white with a heart made of gold. His mom was part Angus, his dad was a pulled Hereford, I hear, so I've been told. Don't know where he come from, he you know, just always was there. Sort of popped up out of pure prairie air. And just how he knew the when and the where to do what he did, we didn't really care. Because when things got dark at the end of the year with six foot of snow, I, who would appear? With a sled full of presents and yuletide beer. Yeah, our own little buddy, the Christmas steer. He didn't miss no one. He visited all the ranches and homesteads, a big and a small. He'd stop at each cabin and let out a ball so folks would come out for their Christmas haul. When Buddy appeared, their eyes opened wide. 
The kids would all clamor all over his hide while the folks would come carry the presents inside and bring him fresh hay with water beside. He did this for years, for count beyond end. When Christmas rolled around and winter's slow wind, if you needed a present or just a good friend, on old little buddy, you sure could depend. Till finally, one Christmas, retirement near, he passed on the reins at the turn of the year to a short, hairy, fat guy with eight tiny deer. More than one cowboy shed more than one tear. Yet, every once in a while, on a Christmas Eve clear, for those who believe for whom Christmas is dear, he'll make an appearance with presents and beer. Good old little buddy, the Christmas dear. We have a very faithful online listener who supported this program for as long as it's been available on the web. And he listens down in Florida. For a long time now, he's wanted me to play a special Christmas song by a special group. The group has been performing for about as long as the Sons of the Pioneers, 80 years. And uh, they've inspired and influenced many of today's country music stars. And they're still performing, and they're still great. The Chuck Wagon Gang. And it took a while, but I finally located a good copy of their version of Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. A oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving a light for those who long have gone, have gone, and guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Wonderful gospel harmony of the legendary Chuck Wagon Gang. Thanks for your help in finding this one, George, and thanks for listening so faithfully all this time. And the Spirit of the West Christmas special continues right after this. Welcome back to Christmas from the Spirit of the West. Now, I'm not sure if I agree completely with the sentiments in J.W. Beeson's poem here, but it's well worth the listen called A Cowboy's Christmas Lament. At the North Pole, cold and frozen, Santa's saddle shop is closing. Two old saddle maker elves will now retire. Or, because of Santa's kindness, 
stick around to mend some harness. One would like to be the Christmas village crier. Other shops are in a tizzy. All the other elves are busy, cranking out cool 5G iPhones by the score. While on rangeland, folks are crying, because a way of life is dying. No one wants to be a cowboy anymore. Now the stampin' tools are dusty, all the scythes and knives are rusty, and the shop, almost abandoned, stands forlorn, while a warehouse full of bridles, leggings, chinks, and slick fork saddles lie in wait for generations yet unborn. No apprentices in training will learn leatherwork or braiding from old masters' calloused hands, nor Western lore from those who love the history of the West. It's myth and mystery. No one wants to be a cowboy anymore. So it's out with spurs and bridles, in with kitty band teen idols. Santa's outsourcing production to Taipei. It just makes sense to keep the manufacture quick and cheap because the kids don't seem to give a hoot today. Time was once when every young man was a Tex or Roy or Gene fan who aspired to learn and live the cowboy code. Now it's tweeter texts and skateboards, rap and heavy metal axe chords. Camo-painted ATVs are all they've rode. They tear through Christmas wrappings, ribbons, bows, and gilded trappings like a diabetic through a candy stash. When they finally reach the bottom of the presents Grandma brought them, they proclaim, I'd really rather have the cash. And it's true. Christmas is botten. Now it seems kids have forgotten that the day commemorates a sacred birth. How the king and the atoner, he whose name we praise and honor, had his holy, humble advent here on earth. They ignore all that he gave us, how his sufferings were to save us. They're enraptured by the snare of things and stuff. The more they get, the more they want, they're never satisfied. It's just impossible to ever get enough of electronic innovations from the techie generations or those elves who made Transformers such a hit. As for braided rawhide bozals and those hand-hitched horsehair headstalls, well, quite frankly, they just couldn't care a bit. So the gnarled, arthritic fingers of the craftsman sadly lingers over one last masterpiece of Western art as unique in its creation as it is in form and function. Just another tool which sets cowboys apart. As those old elves snuff the candle, it seems more than they can handle because it's over. Done. And like we said before, the thing that makes it sad, the thing that hurts us all so bad is no one wants to be a cowboy anymore. The way the Canada Revenue Agency deals with ranchers and farmers has changed a lot in the last few years, and the financial decisions we make today can have a long-lasting impact on our bottom line far into the future. It really helps to have a trusted professional who really understands your situation to guide you with all your accounting requirements and your tax preparation. Having an accountant who knows the difference between a Herford and a Heifer, what a slick and backgrounding are, and that Alfalfa and Timothy are not just names from a storybook, really helps. Kathy McMillan of PMT Chartered Professional Accountants understands the intricacies of specialized programs like Agri-Stability and Agri-Invest. She understands the demands on your time and can help you spend more time doing your job and less time dealing with endless piles of paperwork. See pmtaccountants.com or call toll-free 877-383-8081. The English brothers are doing the chores on their ranch in Colorado right now and I thought we might eavesdrop a little and just see what those boys are up to. Hey guys, what's in this brown package over here? Hey, it's got my name on it. Yeah, from under the tree, Gerald. You're just as impatient as you ever were. Yeah, 
Hey, and if you knock over that tree again, we're gonna lock you in the outhouse till morning. Hey, Ray, how's the Christmas dinner coming? Ain't you got that turkey stuffed yet? Mm, I'm running a bit behind. <laughs> I knew he'd get too attached to Tom. Oh, oh. Hey, Greg's back. Well, I sure hope he brought me that hard candy I asked for. Oh boy, it's sure cold out there, boys. Oh yeah, hey guys, come on over here by the fire. Well, all right. Knock the chill off. Hey, 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 got my candy? Yeah, gather round, brothers. Yeah. I've got a new version of that story this year. Where's my candy? Hey, all good. right. Hey, yeah. 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 Hmm. Okay. It was the night before Christmas, yeah. and yeah. all through the bunkhouse, okay. no doggie was stirring, not even a mouse. Really? Worn out boot socks were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. Hey, Ray, you got any candy? The Wranglers asleep, warm in their bunk beds. Dreams of blue skies were clear in their heads. Mm -hmm. I just slipped on a pair of my newest long johns, closed my tired eyes, and I sighed a big yawn. When from the corral, there came such a clatter I rolled out of my bunk to see what's the matter. Tripped over my boots and stumbled to see the cause of this ruckus disturbing to me. Now that moon with its glow on the fresh fallen snow cast eerie blue shadows on tumbleweeds below. When what to my bloodshot eyes should appear but a bright shiny chuck wagon and eight longhorn steers. Oh, no candy. No candy. Now with a little old driver so perky and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. Yeah. Like the clear call of eagles, his orders, they came. He whistled, he yodeled, he called them by name. Right. Now Bebo, now Bovine, now Lester and Rusty. On Sidewinder, Itchy, on Maverick and Dusty. To the top of that bunkhouse, to the top of the roof. Stampede away, bust away, stomping each hoof. As dry prairie sage in a dust storm will fly. Kicking up like a bronco buck to the sky. So up to the ridge row the chuck wagon flew. With a sack full of goodies, I hope for our crew. And some candy, I hope. And then in a moment... I heard on the roof the clicking and pounding of each longhorn's hoof. And as I scratched my head and was turning around, down the chimney he tumbled, not making a sound. <laughs> Dressed in fringe buckskin from his head to his foot, and a Stetson all dusty with ashes and soot. <laughs> a bundle of goodies he'd flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes were squinty from riding the prairie. Red cheeks that were wind-burned, a crooked nose, sort of scary. Ooh. He licked his chapped lips and he nodded real slow as he scratched his rough beard that was white as the snow. A stump of a pipe he held tight in his mouth and the smoke like a lariat swirling about. He had a broad face and a Dunlap belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl of cactus jelly. Jelly. <laughs> his frame a bit chubby. Mmm, lots of biscuits with his chuck. So I laughed out loud. Ha <laughs> ha, but I sure had good luck. Cause he tipped me his hat and then tugged on his ear. Clearly a sign I had nothing to fear. He spoke not one discouraging word. Packing each boot sock without spooking the herd. Oh, that'd be a trick. And then twitching his finger aside of his nose and giving a wink up the chimney he rose. There he goes. Climbed into that wagon seat to his steers, gave a slap, and away they stampeded the stars as his map. And he bellered right clear as he soared out of sight. Happy Christmas, you all, and to all a good night. Yeah, but I don't get any no, candy. No, that's too bad, Wes. Well, maybe next year. 
Don Kennington was a lifelong horseshoer and a wonderful poet. I remember him having folks just rolling in the aisles. Last time he appeared at the Kamloops Cowboy Festival a few years back, and we sure miss him. This is one of his seasonal pieces called Preparations. Why, I've been out there lifting weights, and I've been out there jogging too, shoving on some blocking dummies like those football players do. I bought some big knee braces and some shin guards and some gloves, practicing on the fence posts how to block and duck and shove. I'm eating healthy food and drink, working hard to get in shape, doing strenuous exercise until my back and shoulders ache. I started early in July because time really slips away. But I'll be ready this year for that stress-filled, frightful day. Paid the bills, filled the gas tank, got insurance on my life. Cause tomorrow I'm a going Christmas shopping with my wife. <laughs> There's still more memorable songs and stories about Christmas on the range when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West celebrating Christmas in cowboy country. Chelsea Cunningham knows how to pull a calf, start a colt, heel for brandings, and Matt Robertson earns his living on the back of a horse and with his guitar and a song. They got together and gave this old winter classic a western twist. Lines like, I got a horse tied out there, and much more. I really can't stay. Maybe it's cold outside. I've got to go away. But maybe it's cold outside. This evening has been, been hoping you go so in. very nice. I'll hold your hands, they're cold as My ice. mother will start to worry. What's your My dog, heart? he will be pacing the floor. Listen to the fireplace so roar. Really I'd better scurry. Beautiful, please don't But maybe hurry. just a half a drink more. Put some records on while I'm The neighbors might think. Maybe it's bad out there. Say, was that a wink? No cabs to be had out there. I wish I knew how. Your eyes are like starlight now. this bell. I'll take your hand, your hair, please. I ought to get home for dinner. Mind if I'm moving closer. I've got a horse standing tight. What's the sense of her? I really can't stay. Don't hold on. Baby, it's cold outside. Maybe it's cold outside. Your welcome has been How lucky you so in. nice and warm. Look out the window at the My storm. My sister will be suspicious. I'm glad she's not here and with us. And knocking on the cabin door. Wind along the prairie shore. Talking in the town is vicious. They're all snowing in But maybe precious. just another dance more. Never such a reason before. I've got to get Maybe you freeze out there. Say, lend me your coat. It's up to your knees out there. This ain't what I planned. When you touch my but hand, don't you see? How can you do this thing to I've me? I've got to be up to Think of my lifelong sorrow. I've got about a dozen to write. If you got pneumonia and die, I really can't stay. Get over that old house. Baby, it's cold, cold outside. outside. Customer or first time through the door, Irvin Tack and Western Wear never disappoints. Folks come from everywhere to see what all the fuss is about. I'm talking over 110,000 square feet of Tack Western Wear accessories, home decor, and more. And if you can't make it in, order online for delivery in no time. 
Free shipping on orders over $100. Some conditions apply. Visit urbans.ca or pop in today. Exit 305 off Highway 2 by Crossfield. Canada's largest Western store. From a radiator cap to an engine block. BCTractorParts.com is your source for whatever you need to keep that essential implement in top shape. Specializing in quality new replacement parts for agricultural tractors, Massey Ferguson, Ford, John Deere, David Brown, Case International Harvester, Universal Deutsch Leyland, Landini, Oliver Fiat, Alice, Zetor, White, and a lot more. If you don't have internet, just call Mark at 250-395-0960. One click or one call and the parts will be on their way. BZTractorParts.com Well, Rodney Nelson is a cowboy poet that we all miss so much. He wrote such great stuff. Here's one he left us with called uh, Wilbur's Christmas Gift. It hardly seemed like Christmas with the prairie brown and bare. Smoke from the country schoolhouse hung lazy in the air. The kids were out for recess when Wilbur trotted by, and everyone came running just to greet old Wilbur High. A favorite with the children, he was always so much fun, this old and weathered cowboy who was loved by everyone. He teased them each a little, till the school door opened wide, and out came the little teacher to call them back inside. She looked like Santa's helper in the frosty winter air, for her rosy cheeks a-blazing matched the color of her hair. Why, Merry Christmas, Wilbur! And before she let him speak, she said, Come to our Christmas program on Friday night next week. He protested just a little. He had nothing he could bring. But she told him, Listen, Wilbur, come to hear the children sing. Just to have you with us would please them to no end to do their Christmas songs and parts for such a special friend. Poor old Wilbur was embarrassed. He had nothing he could share. But darn that feisty schoolmarm made him promise he'd be there. That night he slept uneasy. But by dawn, old Wilbur knew that though a broke old bachelor, there was something he could do. In a draw down by the river, close to twenty miles away, was a dandy grove of cedars he had come across one day. So he saddled up at daybreak, and he stiffly swung astride, for the trip down to those cedars meant a long and chilling ride. Old traveler trotted easy, and they got there before noon. But with winter days so short, he must find one pretty soon. Wasn't long he found a beauty, and he cut it carefully, leaving several bottom branches so it could grow back, you see. He lashed it to the saddle for the long trip to the school, but then he got to thinking that perhaps he'd been a fool. It was just a prairie cedar. The thought made Wilbur frown. It wasn't near as fancy as the ones they sold in town. What if they didn't like it? Doubts flickered through his head. And as evening turned to moonlight, Wilbur's heart grew sick with dread. He crawled slowly from the saddle, cold and stiff and sore, and quiet as a field mouse, left that cedar by the door. The northern lights at dancing and the moon as bright as chrome lit the path to Wilbur's shanty as he swiftly jogged on home. Too tired now to worry about the week that lie ahead, Wilbur fed and watered Traveler, then dropped wearily in bed. Well, he promised that he'd be there. Though he came a little late, he heard singing from the schoolhouse as he lingered at the gate. He eased on through that doorway, and he fumbled for a chair, but he quickly smelled the fragrance of a cedar in the air. He knew he wasn't dreaming, but it sure was a surprise, the beauty of that cedar sitting right before his eyes. There were many strings of popcorn and tinsel on the tree, and all those dancing candles made it blush so specially. The star on top was shining like diamonds had been piled. It reminded him of Christmas, back when he was just a child. And that program was a dandy, the best that he had known. Oh, Wilbur beamed so proudly, like each child was his own. They sang Christmas songs so special, said poems that they had learned. He had sworn they all were angels, from the applause those children earned. Then at last the teacher told him that she wished with all her might to thank each and all for coming on such a cold and 
frosty night. Just one more thing, she smiled and said. I know you all can see that right here in the corner is a special Christmas tree. It wasn't pruned by humans. It's natural beauty at its best. Old Wilbur almost fainted from the pounding in his chest. Yes, this tree is true and honest. It's so very plain and clear. It's just the way God made it, like the one who packed it here. Oh, I'm not too sure who brought it. But of guessing, I would say that horse out in the moonlight looked a lot like Wilbur's Bay. Oh, Wilbur's neck glowed brightly like the color of his shirt, and the teacher and the children hugged old Wilbur till he hurt. Wilbur's eyes, they sure got fuzzy, and they sprung a couple leaks. The hot tears ran like rivers down the side of Wilbur's cheeks. When riding home that evening, he could hear his mother say, The greatest gifts you'll get, my son, will be those you give away. That old north wind Howling way up in the timber Only choir I remember When I was riding on the line One lone star Hanging over the horizon Put there for the wise men Who were following heaven's sign The snow-capped peaks Like the angels in their glory Seem to sing an ancient story As the wind blows through the pines Drifting along to the sound of spurs and jingling, silver bells are ringing. It's Christmas on the line. The snow-capped peaks Like the angels in their glory Seem to sing an ancient story As the wind blows through the pines Drifting along To the sound of spurs a jingle Silver bells are ringing it's Christmas on the line It sounds like sleigh bells ring It's Christmas on the line I always enjoyed Barry Ward's version of Michael Martin Murphy's song, Christmas on the Line, and there's still more Western-flavored songs and stories about Christmas on the ranch when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Gee, I've sure enjoyed putting this one together. There's so much more that we could add if there was only time. But I wanted to make sure I got this song in from the Bar J Wranglers. On a night so long ago By the light of one bright star Two weary travelers far from Galilee Good refuge child was born to bring the gift of love to you and me how the angels told the shepherds of his birth there came a great rejoicing on the earth and they sang glory to God Dawning that first Christmas 
Christmas morn. Peace on earth and tidings of great joy. For unto you this night a child is born. Shepherds of his birth. There came a great rejoicing on the earth, and they sang glory to God in the highest, dawning that first Christmas morn. child is born. And they sang glory to God in the highest, dawning that first Christmas morn. Peace on earth and tidings of great joy, for unto you this night a child is born For unto you this night a child is born For unto you this night a child is born We're going to wind things up on this Spirit of the West Christmas special with a prairie gal Spending Christmas a long ways from the home ranch. Here's Christmas in Alberta with Doris Daly. Sure is pretty here tonight. Excitement in the air. Busy shoppers hustle home through Central Park. The tree must be ten stories tall in Rockefeller Square. And a million lights are sparkling in the dark. Oh, it's a fast-paced life I'm living. It's first class all the way. Fancy office, fancy parties, fancy things. I'm shooting for the works, is what my friends all heard me say. And now, I dine with presidents and kings. It's glamorous, all right. Success and all the rest. And maybe it's this little skiff of snow. But tonight, I'm kind of lonesome for a little place out west and a cowboy down the road I used to know. I bet an opal moon shines on the eastern slopes tonight. The hills lie still beneath a snowy shawl. Chores are done, the porch light's on, a fire crackles bright, maybe Ian's singing at the Longview Hall. It's the symphony for me tonight, champagne and caviar, oh, the swirl and sway and sparkle of this place. But you know, I kind of long to hear a cowboy's soft guitar and to feel a warm chinook upon my face. Where'd she go? That little girl who used to live in cowboy boots made sure each year that Rudolph got some hay. Oh, she's not gone far. Just dresses now in silk designer suits and is living life the New York City way. Sure is pretty here tonight. Excitement in the air, a dab of French perfume. My cab is here. In the swirl and sway and sparkle, I say a little prayer. May it be Christmas in Alberta for me next year.
Well, on behalf of my bride, Billy, our great support crew, Mark and Kathy McMillan, our horses, Lucky, Cody, and JJ, and our barn cats, Smokey and the Bandit, and Spook and Sparkle, <laughs> that's two more than we had this time last year, we hope you have the best Christmas ever. We'll be back next week with some highlights of the last year, and I hope you can join us then. Till then, I'm Hugh McLennan. Hope to see you down the trail somewhere real soon. Mm-hmm.